morning. Yes, it's still morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. And those who have joined virtually, my name is Vijay Babar. I'm going to spend the next 20 odd minutes discussing challenges which organizations are facing or will face when they move to a hybrid cloud infrastructure. Hybrid cloud meaning obviously what they have on premise, plus on applications in the public cloud forming this hybrid cloud model. Um, and before I start, let's see if this works. The magic of technology. I'm going to bring up a few key words. So I'll just mention them to you now so you're aware. Visibility, that's going to be one of my key words during the next 20 minutes. Um, and visibility, in my terms, meaning being able to see everything in your network infrastructure. Pretty much grabbing packets off the wire at line speed so that you can then send those packets to your security and monitoring tools to do the troubleshooting, to do the security analysis, to find the threats and the bad actors quickly. It works very well on premise, you know, 100% um, of the time we use taps, we can span from time to time, we grab the packets, we send them to your security tools, the security tools then obviously have to churn that packet that it receives to find the bad actors or find the threats that they're programmed to do. Another key word I'm going to bring up is deep observability. Um, it's a step up from visibility. Um, and the definition of that, it's pretty much there. It's adding real time uh, network level intelligence um, for your metrics, for your events, for your logs and your traces, so that your security tools um, have a better experience in finding the threats quicker, faster, without having unnecessary traffic and churning through, through all of that data. So, I mentioned to you, today's session is going to be about challenges in the hybrid cloud as you move to a um, hybrid cloud environment or a hybrid cloud model. And you ask me, or you know, it's, it's become pretty much normal that hybrid cloud has become the de facto standard. If you ask me, absolutely yes. Everyone I speak to, they all agree. In fact, 90% of organizations are already running in some kind of hybrid cloud model. Um, they've got obviously stuff on premise, they've got some applications running in their, in their public cloud as well. But the question is, who, who owns that? Who's actually liable for the security? Is it the network operations teams? Is it the SecOps teams? Is it the governance team? And I think I'm gonna be going through some of the challenges. One of the key challenges is where customers and organizations are failing short in taking responsibility that security belongs to them. I've had this up for a few minutes. You've probably had a look at the three bullet points here. This is some research that we carried out recently um, from Dell, from Cybersecurity Action Team, and from Gartner, highlighting the challenges that they found from their customers in terms of the hybrid cloud model. And the first one there is cloud security is top of mind. There's obviously more touch points, which means there's going to be a lot more attack surface on this hybrid cloud model. You've got your services running on premise, you've got your applications running in, in the cloud, um, and this opens up more attack surface for your security tools to try and mitigate and alleviate the threats. Especially now that there, there's a lot more threats in terms of cyber attacks with ransomware and then malware, and that becomes a very, very big concern as you move into this, into this model. Then, of course, there's a barrage of headline news that we're getting. You've all, you've all heard, you know, you hear about it on a daily basis. Let's not forget Log4j, that recently happened. Um, then there's VMs are being exposed, and there's vulnerabilities in the VMs. And these are very, very big, real-life challenges that, that organizations have to deal with and think about um, as they take on this, this new model. Um, and and one, one here, which I was also unaware of, is that nine out of 10 cloud breaches, um, the breaches are coming from cryptocurrency mining. So you get the bad actors, they propagate the VMs as you move to a public cloud model, and then they stop the recursive mining, a very, very big challenge. And the final one here is shared responsibility. I mentioned it a few minutes ago, you know, who takes the ownership of, of, the, of, the, of the security? I'll give you an example. You move over to, Azure or to AWS or to Google, they own the servers, they own the hardware, they own the uptime, okay? Um, but the end-to-end -end application experience or the end-to-end -end security belongs to you. Um, and, and that's where things are failing short, uh, where customers are realizing that, you know, they either own the security or as a public cloud owner own it, 
it's actually a joint responsibility and it, it's, it falls into the hands of both the public cloud owner and the customer. One more that's not on here I'd like to mention, another example, is cost. I think cost plays a very big part, which also ultimately leads into security issues as well, which is now a very big challenge. And again, another example is, if you look at AWS, they offer this great service called VPC mirroring, where you can actually mirror the traffic out from the VPCs out to your security tools. But the problem is that they charge to backhaul that traffic from your VPC out to the security tools. They charge you for bandwidth. It's not free, and that costs a lot of money. And 90%, sometimes 100% of the time, the security tools that are receiving this data, this traffic, don't need all of that data or traffic. They just need a small percentage of it. So now they're churning through unnecessary CPU resources. At the same time, you, the customer, is paying for the backhaul of sending this traffic across, which is very unnecessary and a challenge. A little bit about visibility, and I'll introduce Gigamon into that as well. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the evolution of network visibility and how it started. Um, obviously, Gigamon's been around since the early 2000s, and what we found was, back in the days, a very simple diagram here, by the way, guys. What we found was that you have your network infrastructures, okay? Pretty standard diagrams here, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but at the same time, you have an abundance of network security and monitoring tools, like I said, to troubleshoot and keep your network secure. And what tends to happen is that they are deployed in an ad hoc kind of way, and you get a sprawl of tools in the network, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to contend for the network space. They're trying to get access to the traffic where they are ultimately failing. You obviously have a lot of issues in this kind of environment here where you have blind spots, you're unable to see encrypted traffic, you are unable to see east-west traffic, you're unable to see specific headers, and that means that the tools that are receiving the traffic, which you've paid good money for, are failing short because they're unable to find the threats quickly and fast enough. And this is where Gigamon comes in. Gigamon sits as a layer in the middle of your, in between, shall I say, your network infrastructure, um, and we alleviate these pain points of blind spots, cost, and flexibility by tapping your network links. Let that be physical taps, let that be virtual taps in your public or private cloud. And we bring the traffic, all of the data, into Gigamon. Now, it comes into Gigamon, we can now start doing some additional fancy things to that traffic before we send that out to the security and monitoring tools that you have in your network. What does that mean? It ultimately means that they can now receive what they need as opposed to the entire haystack when they're looking for that needle. Okay, they can now receive just that needle. They can receive the right traffic at the right time. There's no more drop packets because you're not contending for span ports anymore. You're looking into encrypted packets with Gigamon. We can decrypt the packets before sending them out. At the same time, doing things like deduplication, stripping off specific headers, and dropping the amount of bandwidth that gets to these tools. A lot of these tools charge on the bandwidth. If you're sending them unnecessary traffic, one, it takes longer to find the threats. The whole thing here is to make sure that your network is secure, and if you are, like I said earlier, taking a long time to find the threats, it, it, it becomes a big challenge. And how has Gigamon brought that to life? Well, just a quick diagram or a, a yeah, it's a diagram showing what we do. What we've done is we bring the data to the tools as opposed to the tools to the data. We tap, we span, we use virtual switches, we work across the entire network infrastructure, um, any workload, and we'll send the traffic out. At the same time, we'll do the smart intelligence on that traffic before we send that out to your tools. We are not a monitoring device, we are not a monitoring tool, we simply are a one-way, non-intrusive packet forwarder. But the world has changed, okay? It's evolving, we know it's evolving. You know, we've got hybrid cloud, we've got multi-cloud. You know, you're, you're probably not gonna have just a single cloud provider, you may have multi-clouds. How do you operate within multi-clouds? How can your security tools see what's happening within specifically v VPCs from Google, as opposed to Azure, as opposed to AWS, as well as on-premise, at the same time keeping the network secure? So hybrid cloud, multi-cloud becomes a very big challenge now. There's a lot of spend on that. Then we've got 5G. It's not going away anytime soon. We're gonna have over a billion subscribers by the end of this year. Enterprise 5G is massive. Um, and 
you know, it's a very, very big challenge, bearing in mind the number of connections that, that are going to be um, available by the end of the year. Put into that IoT, I think every single organization needs to have IoT as their business strategy moving forward. There's going to be 56 billion plus devices in the next few years, and that's going to cause a massive, massive impact on your data centers or within the cloud and how that traffic is traversing between different VPCs and how that traffic gets to your security tools. You need the tools, and if you're giving them unnecessary traffic or an oversubscribed amount of traffic, they're not going to be able to perform to find the threats to bad actors and keep your network secure. At the same time, throw into that the zero trust architecture and next gen business center, which is and data center, sorry, which is, you know, the tools are unable to keep up with the amount of traffic. We kind of get back to the same problem that we had back in the early days. Um, and that is obviously keeping the network secure with too much traffic. So it, it, it brings aboard a, a lot of complexities. And honestly speaking, it doesn't have to be complex as you move into this model. Things can be simplified. There are ways to alleviate a lot of the pain points that I've just discussed. Um, but, but what we're seeing, the complexity, it's there. It's real. You know, we, we have more applications. We're seeing more users. We've got more devices. We're seeing greater speeds of networks. And all of that is consuming a lot more traffic into the network. Applications for the cloud are demanding more bandwidth. They're demanding more speeds. Then you've got your legacy applications. How do they integrate with your public cloud and your new applications? So these are big, big challenges. You've got endpoint security, which should be, in, for your inside and outside of your organization, should be top priority. You've got east-west traffic I mentioned to you earlier. How do you see what's laterally happening within your east-west environment? I mentioned cost to you. It's a big challenge. You know, you're having to fork out and spend more money, your existing security budget, on new tools because the existing ones are unable to keep pace with the amount of traffic that they're receiving. Cyber crimes, SSL decryption, how do you look into encrypted packets? A lot of the malware communication out there is encrypted. If you cannot see it, it's passing through your network uninspected. But obviously that brings aboard other challenges, you know, as you move to this cloud model or hybrid cloud model, how do you acquire the traffic? How do you see, like I said to you earlier, what's happening within containers? How do you see communications between east-west traffic? And then how do you, in, a, in the right way, send that traffic to your tools so that they're doing what they should be doing? You can obviously throw some agents in here and there. That becomes costly. It becomes undoable. Um, and with that approach, you know, you're missing out on certain things like you're unable to see what shadow IT is happening, you're unable to look into crypto mining, um, you're unable to detect new devices coming up, you're unable to detect unmanaged devices, um, and that then obviously causes issues with compliance and regulations. And then at the same time, you're working in this multi-cloud, hybrid cloud model, troubleshooting becomes a, becomes a concern as well. So enough of the challenges. Let's go into how you can actually simplify a lot of the challenges that I've just spoken about. And that's where Gigamon comes in. We provide a deep observability pipeline. Uh, and by that, I mean we access the traffic that you have in your environment from any environment. Let that be data centers. Let that be private cloud. Let that be open source. Let that be containers. Let that be public cloud from any workload. It can be your legacy apps, it can be microservices, it can be your new devices that come on board, and we send that traffic to any tool that you have in your network that requires it to keep you safe. But not only do we just send it, like I mentioned to you earlier, we acquire that traffic from across multiple, multiple domains. We broker that traffic. By brokering that traffic, I mean we bring it to our platform, and we look at that packet, okay? We are not monitoring it, we look at that packet for whatever period of time that we have, and then we filter, we do deduplication, we do net flow analysis, we do masking, slicing of specific packets, and then we send that out to your tools. At the same time, we can do transformation. We can look at over 5,000 plus metadata attributes. Some of the tools that you send traffic to, do, does, they don't need to see raw packets, right? So why are we sending them raw packets? We're consuming bandwidth, bandwidth costs dollars, more bandwidth means they have to do more work. More work that they're doing means that they're not finding the threats and anomalies and, and, and the bad actors quickly and fast enough. So we transform it. We can send attributes on payloads. We can send attributes on applications. We can send attributes on bad SSL certificates. We can send attributes on crypto mining, et cetera. At the same time, we can decrypt the traffic. 
So rather than having powerful decryption tools in the network doing the decryption, which comes at a very big expense and, and a, a very big overhead, we do the decryption. We sit like a man in the middle, we decrypt the traffic, and we send the decrypted traffic back out to your inline tools. We bring it back, we re-encrypt it, and we send that back out to the network. And I mentioned to you earlier, it's not just about raw packets going to your tools. A majority of the tools don't need to see just raw packets. A lot of them can work very well with just flow records. Your sims, for example, don't need to see the raw packets. You can send them flow records. You can send them metadata. Then you have the other tools out there. Your NDRs, for example, just need metadata. You can considerably drop the amount of traffic that you're sending off from your premise, from your virtual, from your public, reduce the cost, send the right traffic at the right time so that they can perform and do their jobs better. This is a quick overview of the four layers. Obviously, the physical layer where we tap, we send the traffic to the appliances. We have the virtual layer where we can sit on any virtual environment, any public cloud. We can then VPC mirror the traffic out. We can use agents and send the traffic out. We have the intelligence to do application intelligence, traffic intelligence, and so forth before we send the traffic to tools at the same time with a single user interface where we can then deploy new instances of VPCs, spin them up, and we see the workload immediately so you can scale up and scale down. So just to finish off, last two slides, quick recap, um, Gigamon, I've gone through the challenges, I'll just quickly recap the challenges once again, and I'll just put the numbers up. One, two, three, four, five. Obviously we know, we mentioned mirroring services to you earlier, you can only have a single destination. I don't know if I mentioned that actually. If you're mirroring from a from a AWS, for example, you can only send and backhaul that data to a single destination. I don't know any customer, any organization that just has a single security tool. They have tens and tens of security tools in their stack. If you can only send it to a single security tool, a massive, massive, massive challenge because that then means you have to spin up multiple instances of VPCs with the same tool multiple times in order to send the traffic from different clouds on premise or virtual to your tools. I mentioned to you we can do agent stuff, we can add agents, but if you add an agent, it, added, it adds more cost, it adds more performance. And with Gigamon, we can, we can work with VNet monitoring when it comes into Azure, we can work with VPC mirroring and we can traffic and back all the traffic across. You don't need to have a single tool. We can send the traffic to multiple tools. Let that be on premise, let that be in cloud. It doesn't matter to Gigamon. We filter that traffic out and we send that out at the same time, something which you cannot do in a cloud environment because you have very, very minimal transformation of the packets before sending it out. At the same time, single pane of glass. You know, you're working with different vendors on premise, you're working with different vendors in the cloud. It becomes very difficult to manage and troubleshoot what's going on. With Gigamon, I've mentioned to you the benefits. You know, we can work in any stack, any workload, let that be private, VMware, ESXi, and SXT, let that be public, it doesn't matter to us, let that be on premise. Um, we can acquire the traffic from multiple segments, from multiple domains, we don't need to have agents, uh, we can use the native mirroring services that you currently have. And as your workload scale up, we will scale up with you. As you spin up new VMs, we will see the traffic and we can instantly send that data, that traffic, to your security tools in the right and efficient manner. We can optimize the traffic. So the minimal optimization that you get from your public cloud or from your, from your public cloud, should I say, um, we can do additional things like deduplication, SSL decryption, NetFlow analysis, sending out attributes on, on specific application um, filtering as well. And finally, we have the fabric which allows you to view everything in a single instance or pane of glass, as you want to call it, where we get access to all of your workloads, we get access to all of your containers, we get access to all of your private cloud, we get access to everything on premise, so you can control exactly what is going where and when, and you can actually see the amount of traffic that's being passed through the Gigamon box. I will finish off with the final slide which is the world does run on Gigamon. We've been around since early 2000s. We were the founders in this space. Um, and you can see here, I don't need to go through all of it, but a lot of the large organizations around the world are using Gigamon. Um, so we are pretty much well embedded in a, in a hybrid cloud infrastructure, um, and we are helping support our customers um, find these anomalies quicker and faster. Remember, 
Security is never 100% secure, and it's about finding the unknown of the unknowns. And that's where we come in. We help you alleviate a lot of the stresses and challenges so that you can find these unknowns of the unknowns so your tools can better predict threats that are occurring in your network. And from me, that's a thank you very much. We are outside. This is me. That's my colleague. We're going to be, well, first booth on the left-hand side. Any questions you have, feel free to pass over and say hello. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Asante sana. These are moments that we, we live to Thank remember. You. Thanks. Thank you, Mr.